Hello, I am Dr. Kathleen Hall, and this is the way I see it. I'm really excited about today. Uh, it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite topics on the planet. Uh, we're going to talk about creating a home for your soul. Yeah, we're talking about creating a physical home for your soul. So some of the titles I thought about doing as I began this podcast idea was make your home a sanctuary for your soul, your soul at home. Create a home for your soul. Building and creating a home for your soul. Creating shelter for your soul. And the critical, essential importance of a home for your soul, just not your body. So, I, th you know, I think maybe just for a minute, let me do a little background and why I love this topic. And I think it's more important now than ever in human history. And I really mean this. Why I love this topic. Because it's my story. I grew up very aware and creative. I was a sensitive little kid. And I absorbed all the environments I lived in and experienced throughout my life. We all do. The only way that we don't is if we shut down and turn ourselves off for psychological reasons. So whether it was the homes we lived in, monasteries I was around. I happened to be, grow up Catholic, so I've been in with uh, monasteries with monks and priests and nuns. And uh, gosh, the gardens, the, the, the marble, the stone, the, oh my gosh the gold, the carvings, the paintings in these churches and, and these monastic gardens. I, I, I was formed in these amazing places. And what I noticed that it did was no matter how violent, which my father was, or disturbed, as he definitely was, or anything that was happening horrendous in our home, which was a lot, I could go to these places and my soul changed. I felt safe. I felt that I was in a rhythm bigger than myself. I felt that there was something in my, even in my DNA, my mitochondria that was changing. Uh, whether it was the birds and then in the gardens of these monasteries or gardens or places. So also then as I got older, I, I was fascinated with history. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, uh, different people, uh, Lafayette, huge historical figures in the world. So the, one of the first things I did was want to go visit their places. Jefferson, I went to Monticello. I went to... Uh, uh, George Washington's home. I spent a lot of time, I was fascinated with Benjamin Franklin in Philadelphia, Boston, some of the greatest new thought and new age people came from there. So I decided to put a trajectory of my life to go to these places so I could absorb how these people were formed. Uh, I'm, I, I can't tell you how much, Ralph Waldo Emerson, when I walked into his home and sat where he wrote all these amazing things, I absorbed that energy. I've, you know, famous cities around the world, whether it's Florence, Paris, you name it, uh, Barcelona, all over the world. I wanted to absorb what I had read. Museums, gardens, urban parks, lakes. I mean, Central Park, you know, when you hear about Olmsted and how he developed it, it. It's amazing. Gardens in England are completely different than Paris and France. The White House, when I went into the Oval Office, went down the halls and worked uh, in, in different aspects at the White House. The United Nations, uh, when I walked in there, it was very different, very different than the way I had thought it would be after seeing movies and, and documentaries. And how I believe, I truly believe this, if they would do a rehaul of the inside, I believe that what came out of the United Nations would change. Okay, it's, it's a very interesting... So anyway... Um, this mature body that I'm in right now, in very mature soul, uh, has traveled around the planet many times because this place and soul fascinate me. And I've always been just uh, I'm almost obsessed with the powerful effect of your surroundings, you who are listening to this right now, and how it shapes your mental, physical, and spiritual health and well-being. I mean, I've had the privilege of uh, experience the world in innumerable aspects of design, color, fabric, touch. So I know how place and space in your environment affects you. So that's why I believe, please listen, it's more important and critical now than ever in human history that you pay attention to where you're living and what you're doing. Mental health, and first, mental health issues of the day. We have more stress, depression, anxiety than ever before. You can you can write off the shootings that are happening, the violence in the world, um, all the illness, everything that's happening, fractured families, the suicide rate through the roof, mental health issues are critical. 
Second, working from home. Most of us are working from home now. So it's different. You're not leaving your ratty little house or the house you said, oh, I'm going to paint that wall. I'm going to do that when I have time. No, most of us are working in our home. Our brains and our souls are being affected by our home. Our families are. Three, the center of the family in a high-tech, stressful world is in your home. Fourth, most of the people in our world are not going to church. They're not involved in a form of religion. That's just the facts. Studies show us that. So we as parents, as individuals, as you're single, married, I don't care what you are, we must create our spiritual nest, a sacred home, more now than ever, okay? And finally, your home should be your healing balm. It should be your place of safety, of nourishment, of peace. It's up to you to create this space. And also having a lot of fun and introspection and soul searching as you embark on this sacred, incredible journey. So right now, I want you to just imagine the fun we're going to have in the next few minutes, okay? With some great ideas and some things I hope will send you on a new or a deeper trajectory, okay? Please, in creating your soulful home. We're going to talk about creating a soulful home in four different areas. Design ideas to create your soulful home. Okay, these are fun. Inexpensive ways to put your heart and soul into your home. My personal tips for a soulful home. And then 10 tips for a happy home. Okay, we're going to go through these uh, and hopefully get you going. Um, no one wants your home to feel cold and lifeless. So to create a space that feels full of character and charm and love and peace, it's important to make sure your home has soulfulness woven through it in every aspect of it. Whether your style leans towards traditional or contemporary, uh, minimalist, there are plenty of ways to inject your liveliness, your soul, into your home. So what's the key for adding soul to your space? Okay, here are some tips. First is tell your story. One key to a soulful home is making it feel totally your own. Display the out items throughout your home that speak to you personally. What do you love? Or where... Where do you come from? What's your family history? Are you Irish? Are you from South America? Are you from China? Where are you from? Is that your home? Do you, do you want to bring it into there, that feeling? And, and what do you love? Do you love animals? Do you love fabrics? Do you love color? Do you love traveling? Think decorative artifacts and spiritual things that you picked up on your travels, an heirloom table passed down through generations, or, or vintage maps of places you've seen. Um, I happen to be the giver of the quilt from my great-great-grandmother back in the 1800s. Um, and it has shirts and, and aprons and clothing that they wore back then. Into the, They didn't throw anything away. They didn't have any money. So they made them into these quilts. I also have the Temperance Bible, which um, is when you got a Bible back in the 1800s, you would sign it, the Temperance Pledge, that you wouldn't drink. So I have our family Bible way back in the 1800s. So I keep it in a prominent place. So these are cool things that are passed down to you. Display them in a reverent place. Consider grouping objects together for a special theme. I, uh, I have certain areas where I have the younger children when we had younger kids and traveled. I have other places where places we um, just paintings I painted that um, we traveled, you know, different places, uh, Santa Fe, Alaska, Europe. Um, make these little gatherings so that your soul goes right back to those amazing memories. And then when people are in your house, you can share your experience with them. Embrace the past. Choose items from different periods in soulful mixes, new and old. And you might want to um, kind of maybe mix contemporary and, and um, historical furniture, however you feel about that. A good guideline is to have most of your pieces fit the aesthetic you're looking to achieve, okay? Do you like that country look? Do you like a contemporary look? Um, for an example, our home is a lot of antiques, a lot of collectibles, upholstered things, uh, some pretty uh, collectible art, paintings. Uh, my daughter hates it. My doctor daughter hates it. When she comes into the house, she wants to throw up. She's very contemporary, very modern, and her home reflects that. So my home is like um, hell to her, which is pretty funny. She grew up in it. But anyway, um, and she's into modern. See, I don't want to change her. That is who she bees, and she loves the open, huge, modern space with hardly anything in it. You may want to consider going bold or soft with your color palette. Incorporating some colorful prints and patterns is a great way. Not expensive either, by the way. Choose a dramatic wall cover or a wall co uh, color or wall covering 
that brings new soulful things in. Um, to be honest, I have had uh, a bedspread, I hate to tell you this, that I've had for 20 years. It was very expensive. It was custom made. Back then I felt the queen. It was uh, bread with gold tr you know, trim and brocade and it's very rich. The chairs in my bedroom are red. Now that was where I was at that point. Right now we're in the process. My room is painted a pale, beautiful blue that when you walk in, you feel like you're floating up into the sky. The pattern, the new, the new duvet, and it's not expensive. Okay, now this is like a online buy uh, coverall cover at uh, duvet cover. It's light blue and it's got this Asian with a bird, and the bird is under like a Bodhi tree, and it's the softest blue you have ever seen in your life. See, so changing that has totally changed me. I'm telling you, when I walk in, instead of walking into this bold who I was room. All of a sudden, I'm at a stage of life where I'm, I'm walking into a womb, into the sky. I'm, I'm disappearing almost, uh, dissolving into the sky. And then I have a tray ceiling that I decided to paint a shade darker. Just one shade. You go to the paint store and say, I want one degree, 0.1 degree deeper. And I have this huge vaulted ceiling. So when I lay on that bed, I am literally in heaven. I'm, so it didn't cost much, I promise. Unbelievable difference. So go, you may want to go bold, whichever you are whatever stage of life you're in. Display your art that speaks to you. Um, no room is complete without a little art. I believe that. Even when it comes to the bathroom, choose pieces that inspire and uplift you, okay? Modern, abstract, reproductions, whatever they are, start painting yourself. Do a couple cute paintings or beautiful paintings and put them up. To me, art is the soul of the home. It is. Choose pieces that represent your personality. I have sculptures. God, I even have six-foot sculptures. Um, I have... Bronze sculptures, carved sculptures, paintings. So my life is pretty much evolved around, I'm a big artifact collector from around the world. So my walls, everything is, but what about you? What about you? What about you? My, again, here we go back to my daughter. She hates it. So you may not like it. She feels like they're, quote, old things. So you may need fresh and new. How about adding warmth and coziness? Soulful homes feel inviting. So bring in blankets, throws, candles. Consider including warmer whites, gray tones. They're really in now. I mean, there are so many gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I went to Sherman Williams and I, I went to rush in and rush out. I was there for three hours. It was like being at Baskin Robbins with 31 flavors and me testing, tasting every one of those colors. Oh my God. And, and truthfully, if I could do it over again, I would probably want to design for people. Um, they're soulful homes because I love this so much. So next second, let's talk about inexpensive ways to, that you can do this. Um, first off, I think it's really important. You can tell a lot about a person when you enter their home. Uh, a home seems to envelop you in a hug or heart and soul. Whether it's a new home, whether it's simply redecorating, painting, senses of sight, smell, touch, hearing. Okay, it's it's who you be. It's who you be in this world in this short in the short time you're alive, okay? It's a very short time. So the saying, home is where the heart is, implies that someone has invested considerable energy decorating, stylizing their home. And I don't care if you have two cents to rub together. I have had nothing, literally nothing, um, literally, um, living in other people's uh, basements and by coal furnaces or in closets in my earlier life when I was going to school and trying, trying, trying to um, get my way out of challenging circumstances, and I knew an education was my way out. But what I did was I was able to go to museums, gardens, as I said, and be in other places and say, when I can, someday in my life, I am gonna be able to surround myself with beauty. I am, I am, I am. So the only way that I could do it at that point was to visit, and now I surround myself with it. I live in one of the most beautiful homes on the planet. I believe, you may not like it, but um, it's delicious and it's loving and it's amazing. Visual appeal, the first thing you'll notice when you enter somebody's home is the way it looks. How's it, the colors, the furnishings, the style themes. How do you want your sanctuary, your nest, your home to say? What do you want it to say about you? Do you want it to be bright and light, cozy, soft, bold, bright? artsy. You know what? What do you want it to feel like? And don't ever underestimate wall color. Studying the color wheel, learning which colors are cool and warm and soft. 
okay, what, what, are, what do they make you feel like? Go to a paint store, grab a bunch of swatches. So what I did, bring them home, tape them on the walls and live with them and go, hmm, I wonder how this makes me feel. Rather than determine the warmth of a room by wall colors too, just you may want to select a neutral color and, you know, paint one wall. Uh, in some rooms, I've got one wall painted, which was absolutely gorgeous. I didn't think I'd like it. Maybe paint two walls a different color. Um, but also, and remember what I did, I did my ceiling in a, uh, I painted it just one. I had a tray ceiling, I have it. So I instructed the paint mixer to do it 1.1 uh, mix, which means it's just one, you know, 0.1 darker. And it makes you feel like you were being drawn up into the sky. Um, also what I did, I've never, I haven't had wallpaper in, I don't know. 30 years, 35 years. So what I decided to do is we found a wallpaper that matches my inexpensive duvet and the wallpaper is like super inexpensive. Um, I'm going to put one wall in the bathroom, the wallpaper, that is the same duvet that's in my bedroom in the next room. Get it? So that when I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face, I get to look at those Asian birds on the tree. I'm so beyond excited. I can't stand it. So anyway, um, like I said, I haven't done anything in so long. I'm, I'm beyond excited. That's why I wanted to share this with you. Look at the new life it's giving me at my age. Are you kidding? And, and it's, and it's also a chakra, spiritual life changing new. I feel like my life is opening again after COVID, after everything we've all been through, it's opening. The, and again, I want to share this with you because I want you to have this. Okay. Uh, remember at the front door, let's go in, uh, signs of welcome. What does your, do you have a doormat? It's, it's now remember it's spiritually significant, especially in Asian cultures that you take off your shoes, Hindu and other ones that end you enter bow and enter the home because you are entering someone's holy sacred sanctuary. That is where their souls live, that family. So do you want people to take off their shoes, have a little shoe rack there? Do you just want a beautiful, loving doormat? Um, please remember the entrance is so important. And there's an abundance of reasonably priced shapes, sizes, styles of interior and exterior mats. Okay, um, you can put one with your family family name or not. I don't. I don't like that. Um, I want them to enter soulfully, not. You understand, like not Hall or Hicks. I, I I don't want to stop them with their cognitive going. Oh, this is their house. I want to float them in. But again, that's up to you. Adhesive wall art. Hey. I love the new things that they're doing now. The selections are endless. They have florals, animal prints, landscapes. Um, I'm telling you, mirrors. We just had a new granddaughter, and uh, my daughter did not. Again, this is the modern art one. She did not want to paint the walls a color, blah, blah. So I got her into doing a Serengeti safari. So we got the adhesive wall art, and you can get giraffes, zebras, mother and cubs and lions, birds, elephants. Isn't that cool? And... You just clean the surface and apply them, or you can pay somebody to apply them. But isn't that cool? And then when you're tired with that stage or whatever else happens, you just take it off. Love it. Um, wreaths, you can hang those in the front door, back door. I am not a wreath person, but a lot of my neighbors are, and they go to uh, Michael's, which is an art store, and they love it. They put wreaths together. They have different seasons, summer wreaths, fall wreaths, Thanksgiving Christmas or holiday season during the winter. You know what I mean? They change them out and, um, and that's their thing. But um, that's definitely not my thing. But if it's your thing, hey baby, go for it. Area rugs, I'm an area rug freak. Um, bring, they bring warmth and personal style and, and whether it's wood, carpeted, tile, which I have all those. And you know what I did this time? Instead of um, through my stages where I thought I had to buy an expensive rug, this time I went to Amazon, Wayfair, and Target. So I got my, my new rugs to go with my delectable, delicious, soft blue bedroom and um, my new duvet. I went to Target and I found two of the most gorgeous rugs you've ever seen. I put them in. My husband came home from the hospital, walked into the bathroom, and he said, Okay, we have been married forever. These are the most beautiful rugs I have ever seen. I said, Jim, I got him a Target. I got him a Target. And he flipped out. He went, oh, my God, you're kidding. I thought they were. So don't, again, I'm going to keep preaching this. Don't, I don't want to hear, I don't like excuses. Those of you that know my work, I don't like excuses at all. So just go, okay, I can do this. Buy them at a secondhand store uh, on our next door app. Lots of times people are giving away, selling. I have uh, two gorgeous rugs right now tied up in the garage 
that I used before, and I'm going to give them to somebody. I don't want. I don't need them, but they're gorgeous and beautiful. I had them forever. Anyway, also next, hide your clutter. S seeing all the small items makes the household look dysfunctional. And by the way, it feels messy. And I do a whole thing since I'm this stress expert on clutter stress. It does affect the brain. Get rid of clutter. I don't care where you have to put it. Buy you some cute wicker basket. You can buy adorable cloth baskets. We bought a couple plaid for my granddaughter's bedroom. So one's for toys, one's for clothes. They are precious. We throw stuff in there. Do it. Get wicker baskets, cloth baskets. You can get them at any of the retailers I've named. They are adorable. You can put folded towels, shoes, office supplies, mail, recycling. You can put anything in them. Please do not have a cluttered house. One thing I've never had, I can't stand clutter. Um, my feeling is I work like a dog. My husband works like a dog. We had kids, raised a family, very busy, um, working in the community. And when I come home, I do not want to enter clutter, and it does affect your brain. We are one of the most cluttered societies in the world, so stop the clutter. Um, and then, plus, in your brain, get it. So then you have it in those bags or in those baskets. So then, on the weekend or whenever, you can have your kids or spouse or partner or whatever pull them out and go through them and get rid of them get it so it's also a way to keep it together then one once a week once every two go through it and get rid of it so you don't doesn't store up lighting is huge 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 i went through my whole home my entire home excuse me and put in led lighting uh, especially in the ceilings it has made night and night and day difference it's soft it, the home looks completely more soulful and beautiful and loving um, and I love lamps. I have lamps that are absolutely... I've got one of Kuan Yin, the goddess of love and compassion. I have one... I have amazing lamps that I've collected through the years. I mean, some people collect cars. Some people collect... I like to collect, collect lamps. Uh, they change the total look and feel of your spiritual home. Um, and also, like I said, I changed out all my light bulbs for LED. Um, and also, I've got a Himalayan salt lamp. It's pretty cool. I plug it in once in a while. I have a kitchen. I have an altar in, of course, my bedroom, my kitchen. I've got them all through the house so that I can stop, sit down, meditate, and take deep breaths and focus, go back inside. And these Himalayan salt lamps are so cool. They add a warm glow. They detoxify the room, by the way. And they, um, they detoxify a room by adding negative ions into the air. They come in different things. So I, I love mine. Just kind of think about it. It's cool, pretty cool. Your kids will love it too. And don't underestimate the power of curtains. The length, the weight, the color. Curtains can be used to let out light in or block it out. Heavy curtains keep heat from escaping and keep your room dark. My daughter works the night shift as an ICU doctor. So she's got to have very, very no let light in, you know, blocking lights. Mine is the opposite. Um, mine are sheer, clear uh, I've got these wood blinds that open up during the day. Um, I love lightweight. She has to have, because of functioning for her job, she's got to have the uh, thick ones. Please. They're, and they're not expensive again. Um, this is the truth. On my back porch, I had an estimate. I had them come in and estimate how much drapes and hanging them would cost. Okay, are you sitting down? They told me it would be 20000 One was 18000 and one was 15000 estimates. I, dollars. Are you kidding? I went, is this a joke? So I went on Amazon and I found the similar curtains, I swear to God, I swear, and the uh, rods, and I put it up um, myself, did the whole thing, and I think it cost, I don't want to exaggerate, but it was like $800 or 750 or $800. So where there's a will, there's a way, and I'm telling you, you can do it. Don't forget frames on pictures, pull out your, we all just keep our pictures on our phone, print some out, put some pictures up. Um, I'm a flower freak. I have, uh, flake flowers in some of my dark rooms, but I have always fresh flowers in my sunroom and fresh flowers in the kitchen where I cook and live and the bar where I bake. And, uh, in that big area, that family room area, I, fresh flowers. Um, and, and again, I believe in fresh flowers. We have studies from Harvard that show they help with depression and anxiety. Also, you feel, um, 60% more energy when you have, uh, fresh flowers. I get mine. Uh, again, I'm not selling any particular company. Kroger has very inexpensive, fresh, fresh, fresh flowers. And they get them in every single day. I keep the most gorgeous flowers 
and I talk to them and I love them and I thank you. I thank each flower for spending its life with me because think about it. It's been cut from wherever it came from and you're choosing to have it spend the rest of its life as it dies with you. So I love my flowers. Um, but anyway, and also vases are another thing. Um, I love my vases. That's a whole nother story. By the way, you can go on Amazon and other places and get, I've got pink vases, red vases, green vases, purple vases, red, you name it, all on Amazon, gorgeous and, and inexpensive. And so when I get these flowers at Kroger, which are inexpensive, put them in these vases. I look, it looks like, the, it looks like something elegant and I love it. And it only costs a couple dollars. Next, my soulful tips that I love, gardens. I'm a big garden freak, always have been. Uh, I wish with this podcast I could post some of my garden stuff because they're gorgeous. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll have a place online where I can show that. Hmm. Um, anyway, on the Mindful Living Network, that might be a good idea. That when I talk about these things in podcasts, maybe I could show it. That would be a good idea. Um, gardens. My gardens are, gardens are gorgeous. I have statuary. I have uh, women that are six feet tall surrounded with flowers. I'll just be honest. And um, it's my gardens are amazing. So I sit out there at least 30 minutes a day. I put a timer on because I want to absorb the energy from these gardens and the bees and the birds and flora and fauna in the wind. Everybody, I don't care if you have a condo and you have no dirt, you can have a balcony garden. You can have something. You can have an inside garden with a light where you grow flowers in a little three by um, three foot by one foot uh, little holder that you can buy. Okay, there's no reason. Again, remember, I don't like excuses. Altars. I have altars everywhere. In the kitchen, I have an altar with people I pray for every day or or shootings or whatever. So I have that. I have, again, I've got some, you know, women that I adore. I've got some statues there. I've got uh, my prayer beads. I've got um, people I need to pray for. And I have inspirational sayings there. And then another thing in your home, wherever you're designing it, make sure you have a place for naps, a place for reading, a place for working, and a place for coffee, a place for reflection, and a place for moving your body, okay? You need a specific, like when I know I'm going to take my nap, I know exactly which couch it is. The dogs do too, because when I walk there, they all jump up where the feet are. And my, my blinders, you know, the things that cover your eyes, um, I have it hit, I have it stuck right under the couch thing, so... Um, so I know exactly what I'm doing. So does my brain. Reading on the porch. Exactly the same square where my books are. Dogs know that too. Uh, working out, moving right here at the room I'm in and the taping room. And again, please make these little sub nests inside of your nest. And the feel of fabrics. Oh my God, do we love fabrics? I love fabrics. I can't even tell you. And you're, please just remember, you. it should reflect your journey. And again, last but not least, I'm going to give you a couple tips for a happy home. Please, as I'm closing this out, it cannot be overlooked. Please, it cannot be overlooked how much our homes shape our moods, actions, and our outlook on life. Okay? This is, you, your mother's womb was filled with blood and water and beautiful things that created you. This is your womb. Okay? You're the midwife to this womb. Fun. Cool. This is it. This isn't a rehearsal. This is your life. You're going to die. Your home's got to be your place. So they're where we start and where we end each day. They're where we hold on to power to dramatically change the way we live, who we live with, and we spend our time. And now more than ever, our homes are there to take care of us and keep us feeling our best, keeping us feel safe in a fractured world, keep, keeping us in some kind of rhythm with the chaos of, of the lives we live, technology, so, these are just a few tips, okay, to keep it happy. Keep it tidy. I talked about that. Remember, clutter causes stress. I have a whole little spiel I do for the media. I do it on television for about what clutter does to the brain. So, make it a spiritual practice of taking a couple minutes to uh, put your space back in neutral, meaning put the things in, the, I told you, in the hampers, in the little bags, whatever you decide to do, baskets to keep it. Incorporate soft textures, soft, cozy textures, and happy spaces. We just bought new towels. You think we're kidding? Towels make a complete difference. My husband is now humming when he takes his shower. The plumber came in the other day to change 
something out for a leak. He picked up the towel to move it, and he went, this is the softest towel I've ever felt in my life. And he's been a plumber for 25 years. So they really, see, immediately his brain stopped, and it stopped him in his tracks. And I have um, blankets. My aunt happens to be dead. Uh, she was 90 when she died, and she helped raise me. She made handmade blankets. I keep two of those uh, near the foot of our couch where I have my little nap place. I cover myself every day with my aunt's blanket because she, actually, she birthed me. The doctor couldn't get to the hospital. She was a nurse, and so she delivered me out of my mother. And now I have her blankets um, that I pull up over me. I love my Aunt Pat. Anyway, choose colors and patterns that spark joy. Joy. When I walk into my little blue bedroom instead of my bright red one I had before, oh my God. Now this is a challenge for Kathleen. Make your bed. Okay. I, um, I'm terrible. I try to do it every day. Making the bed can be the first small accomplishment. They said most successful people make their bed every day. Most people that aren't depressed and happy make their bed. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm like an alcoholic in an AA meeting for bed, for bed making. I'm trying. Okay. But sometimes when I wake up and I, pr I pray when I get up first thing and do meditations, it's so hard for me not to head for the coffee just directly for the coffee. Then I tell myself I'm coming straight back to make the bed. So anyway, that's a work in progress. Uh, keep things fresh. You can change small things at any time. Make sure you keep your sentimental items on display. Um, this is the farewell tour, honey. I hope you have your sentimental items on display. They're yours. Invest in experiences at home. You know, whether it's sound system, if that makes you happy, if you like music or TV, you like to hear it differently, or football games, new cookware, you know, a projector out in the back for you can have home movies at night, uh, a grilling space outside, whatever it is. Um, next, make sure you let the light in. Remember that even if you have those, you know, no light curtains, make sure you open them, okay? It improves your mood, it changes your energy levels, it helps with depression. Natural light changes melatonin in the brain, okay, which helps with depression and anxiety. So do not underestimate light. It changes everything physiologically and mentally in your body. And again, I talked about this, bring in plants and greenery. Oh, God, I'm obsessed with plants. As a matter of fact, my patients, some of my patients that have died, um, really sad, tragic deaths, um, they had a plant in their rooms. And I have Tony from 1990. Okay, Tony died in 1990. There was a tiny little plant in the corner of the room. I still have Tony in my sunroom. Talks to me every day. I love you, Tony. He died of AIDS. Then I have Brother Paul from the monastery, and I've had him since 1990, 1991. And um, Brother Paul, I talk to him and ask for guidance every day. So anyway, um, I love my plants, my kids, and always use white. It's refreshing. It reflects light well. And again, they have beautiful, beautiful off-whites. Oh my God. When I went to Sherman Williams, these little off was just a touch of gray, but it's not really gray. Oh my God. So anyway, uh, also get some new dishes. Uh, I love that. I keep my dining room table set all the time and I have, I bought inexpensive white dishes for the dinner plate and then the smaller salad plates. I buy them too uh, at estate sales, online, replacements.com. I buy them at Amazon. And so what I do is during uh, holiday season, I do red and green. And then in January, I use these little uh, ducks. And again, I should probably put this online because they're really, it's really beautiful to take a small round table and you change it every month and it makes your mood change. Then February is the month of love. So I make it with hearts and then March is spring. So then I do um, purple because it's Easter and holiday and Hanukkah and uh, anyway, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, uh, through the year, I change it every month. So um, let's see, what am I now? I'm this gorgeous color blue because it's June. But anyway, do it, do it. And if you have any questions or anything, just text me or, I mean, not text me, but email me and let me know and I can sure help you. But I think this has given me an idea that I think I'm going to post this stuff on, on, on our website. Um, anyway, so we've been talking about creating a home for your soul, Y-O-U-R, soul because it will change everything about your life. It'll create a new vibrational frequency, new energy, new positivity, okay? And in that vein, do not, you know, we have a newsletter that gives all kinds of tips. So go to uh, mindfullivingnetwork.com or our, O-U-R, 
M L N O U R M L N dot com. Either one of those. Go on, um, get the newsletter. You can also hit contact me if you have any ideas, questions. And uh, we are committed. We are committed in, to entertaining, educating, and enlightening our world. That's what the mindful living does. It's why we were created. It's our world. Let's hold our hearts and hands and heal ourselves. Please, our world needs us. We need to bring mindful living into the world. Please share us with your family, your friends, and your community. We need to do this together. And remember, we've got a beautiful meditation room where right now you can meditate in Kyoto uh, in the middle of a bunch of cherry blossoms or in the middle of lavender fields in Providence, France, or anything. All in our meditation room. And we have guided meditations. We have an MLN app. You can go to any app store, get Mindful Living Network app. And again, our newsletter. Please follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, all that stuff. You know I love you. I'm just trying to make the world a better place, I guess. Uh, trying to give us some hope. And what's got to start at home. The home in your heart, which uh, ripples out into your home, your physical home, okay? So anyway, know I love you. Uh, this is the way I see it. And I am Dr. Kathleen Hall. Thank you for the privilege of your time.